In this demonstration, we're going to show how to model a vehicle powertrain. Our powertrain will have an engine connected to a torque converter. The torque converter is connected to a single gear transmission, which is then connected to a differential. This differential splits the torque between two wheels on the rear axle. We're going to model this powertrain using Sim Driveline. When we're finished building the model, it will look like this, and we'll see during simulation that the vehicle speed maxes out just after six seconds. We'll also see the corresponding engine power. I'll now switch over to the Simulink environment so you can see how to build this model. Sim Driveline can be found beneath Simscape in the Simulink library browser. We'll open up a new model and build our powertrain here. The first component that we'll need is an engine model, so we'll drag a generic engine into our model. We're going to run an open throttle test. To set the throttle to be 100%, we're going to use this constant block. Our engine model has two mechanical connections. This mechanical connection represents the connection between the engine and the vehicle body via the engine mounts. We're going to set that to be a rigid connection using a mechanical rotational reference block. The other mechanical connection represents the drivetrain shaft to the rest of the powertrain. We'll need to specify the inertia for that shaft and we'll do that using this inertia block. We'll set the inertia to be 0.2 kilogram meters squared and we'll set the initial velocity to be 800 revolutions per minute. The next component in our powertrain is the torque converter. We'll drag that into our model. We'll need to specify the inertia on the other side of the torque converter so we'll simply copy and paste this inertia block. We'll set the inertia of this shaft to be 1 kilogram meter squared and since the vehicle is starting from rest, we'll set the initial velocity to be zero revolutions per minute. The next component in our powertrain is the transmission. We're going to use a single gear for the transmission in this model. So we'll drag in a simple gear and connect that to our powertrain. We can see that in the gear model we can specify meshing losses and viscous losses. For this simulation, we'll keep it simple. We're only going to change the direction that the output shaft rotates, and we'll have it rotate as the same direction as the input shaft so that the vehicle moves forward. The next component in our powertrain is the differential gear, so we'll drag that into our model. The differential gear will split the torque between the two wheels on the rear axle, so we'll bring in a tire model for the left and right wheels, and we'll connect the mechanical connections to the differential. Our vehicle model will need a model of the longitudinal vehicle dynamics, so we'll drag that into our model and connect the mechanical connections to our tire models. The tire models need to know the normal force so that it can calculate the slip, so we'll use the normal force calculation from our longitudinal vehicle dynamics model. At this point, our powertrain model is complete. We'll want to view the results during the simulation, so we'll use a Simulink scope to plot the vehicle speed. The vehicle speed is calculated by our vehicle dynamics model. To set the units of the speed of the vehicle to be plotted, we'll use this converter block. So we'll connect that here, and we'll specify the units to be plotted to be kilometers per hour. We'll also want to plot the speed, uh, the power generated by the, by the engine. So we'll take these two blocks, copy them over here, and we will specify the units on this plot to be watts. We now need to set up the solvers for our simulation. Because we're modeling a physical system and using special solver technology, we'll need access to some additional solver settings, and we get those through the solver configuration block. The last thing that we'll do is select the solver for the simulation itself, and we're going to use ODE15S, which is a full implicit solver. At this point, we can run the simulation in order to see the simulation results. So we'll plot, we'll bring up the scope and run the simulation. We can see that the speed of the vehicle maxes out just after six seconds. And if we open up the plot of the engine power, we can see where the engine power peaks during our run. This demonstration has shown how we can model a vehicle powertrain using SimDriveLine.